my friend. Welcome to week one, day one of our study in Ruth. I'm so excited to be with you today. Let's open in prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the book of Ruth. Thank you ahead of time for all that you're going to show us and teach us about yourself through this study. Be with us now as we unpack these first few verses, Lord. Help us to see what you would have us to see. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, let's read, shall we? Uh, Ruth chapter one, verse one. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem and Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malin and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Malin and Chilion died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husbands. All right, friend, you know what? I am going to start right there with that last sentence because I think that is the main point. Uh, everything, these five verses kind of set the stage to explain why is it uh, that this woman is left without her two sons and her husband. All right, and that woman, her name is Naomi. So, but friend, if you are new to inductive study, and for those who are returning to this, you know it's always good to ask those who, what, when, where, how, and why questions. That's exactly what I've done in my study this morning. I've just gone through and I've answered these questions, starting off with the question of when. <laughs> and I'm just going to go, you know, to keep this video somewhat short, I'm going to ask the questions and give a short answer answer. And then at the end of the week, I'll try to unpack all of this just a little bit more in a weekly teaching time. But my first question is when? And clearly the word tells us in the days when the judges ruled. And so then I asked, all right, what is a judge? Because I think I know <laughs> what a judge is. In my 21st century mind, a judge is someone who rules over a court of law. But I looked it up. I wrote it up. First of all, I wrote it over here in my keyword column. And then I looked it up in a Bible dictionary. And it says this, a judge is a chieftain. He's the head of a tribe or a clan. And specifically, this term judge was used for the leaders of Israel between the time of Joshua and Samuel. And that is the book of Judges in our Bible. And I read a little bit uh, in Judges chapter 1, Judges chapter 2, because we have a beautiful cross-reference here on Judges. Judges chapter 2, verse 16. Then the Lord raised up Judges who saved them out of the hand of those who plundered them. So I'll unpack this bit a little bit in the weekly teaching at the end of the week, because I think it's important for setting the stage and understanding that this book of Ruth is set during the time of Judges. And, and, and I think it's helpful just to better understand how chaotic the time of the Judges were. All right, so that's question number one. When in the days when the Judges ruled? Then I ask what? and why, all right? So what is a famine? We have a famine and, uh, and we see that a man, it says uh, in verse one, a man of Bethlehem and Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. So there's the why, <laughs> all right? Uh, why does this man go to Moab along with his wife and two sons? Because there is a famine. And again, okay, famine, not a word I use every day. Why? And, you know, why is that? Because I think none of us really have lived through a famine. We've all lived through trials, but a famine, a famine is a severe, again, I wrote this in my keyword column, a famine is a severe shortage of food resulting in violent hunger, starvation, and death. 
All right. We have seen famine elsewhere in the Old Testament. We, I mean, we saw it in Genesis, right? Abraham twice uh, sojourns. He goes to other lands because of famine. He went to Egypt and he went to uh, Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, when there was famine in his uh, in this land of what would be Israel. And then to sojourn, sojourn again, it's not a word that I use every day. So I put it in the keyword column and that means to spend a certain length of time to reside in a place, in a community, how uh, as a foreigner, temporarily kind of as this alien you, you you don't fit in like i lived in china for three years i was an alien i was a foreigner there uh and in this case probably a, a worship of different gods too right all right so what do we answer? We've answered the when, the what, the why, the where. We have, okay, uh, this man is from Bethlehem in Judah. And I highly encourage you to draw that map. And that way you just have this visual of where Bethlehem, uh, uh, the land of Judah, and Moab are. I think it's important to this story and out there somewhere i've got a video on how to draw a map of israel friends it can be super primitive like keep this very very easy uh, i'll show you what i did today all right that's it and i'll i'll put a link to that video as well all right so the next question is who who are we talking about and this man and his wife and his two sons are clearly identified. We have Elimelech, and his name starts with L. L is the word for God. Uh, so I, I'm just wondering, you know, his people, his, his father must have been a worshiper of God, L. And, and then we have Naomi, his wife, and her name, because names are important in the Old Testament. Names kind of go together with character. Her name means to be lovely, to be pleasant, delightful. We might call her a pleasant one. Who else wants the name Naomi? I do. Uh, and then Malin and Chilion are their sons. Uh, their names meant to, they, their names aren't very promising to be weak, uh, to come to an end. And I was like, uh oh, <laughs> I think this is pointing us to kind of some spiritual lessons here, but we want to make note of that. And I just asked the question, they, did they become weak in faith? Just a question may not get answered, but being curious with the text all right, so we've answered every question except for the how. And I asked this, I asked, how was life in Moab? We see that they moved to Moab. How was life? Friends, oh, it was terrible. It was tragic. There were, I mean, this is filled with trouble and trials such that Naomi is left completely destitute. Uh, she's left with nothing, utterly void, utterly barren. This is suffering to the extreme, and she is suffering in extreme poverty, which I think begs the question, why? Why, God? Why, uh, why would you allow this to happen to Ruth? Why such suffering? Where are you, God? Uh, why do you allow Ruth to experience this tragedy after tragedy? And obviously that's not answered here, but I think it's a worthy question to ask. It's one that I think we often ask, God, why do you allow such suffering? So promising that maybe we might get a taste of why or a little bit more of a, we may not answer that question, but I think the story addresses it or shows us that we can ask that question. All right, so clearly this is setting the stage for why Naomi is left in Noah, Moab uh, without, her, without her husband and without her two sons. 
And you might be wondering, okay, yeah, we've observed some things, we've unpacked the meaning of some things, but how do I apply this for today, Carmen? What is in here? Well, we can look at some of the details. We can also just ask that big question and begin the conversation, begin the wrestling over uh, this, why, Lord, would you allow suffering? Uh, we could we could wrestle through that with the Lord, but here's some here's some different applications that I had, and there can be many, just as there are many things to observe. I asked, okay, would anyone refer to me as a pleasant one? <laughs> like I really I was struck by the name Naomi. Uh, would anyone call me that? And I was like, Lord, change my heart such that I might be known as a pleasant one. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, that's practical for today, isn't it? Who wants to be the pleasant one today? I do. And then I asked this heavier question, when have I ever been destitute? When have I been at my wits end, like at the end of myself uh, in my life? And so I kind of took some time to answer that question and and talk about that with the Lord. And then last of all, I just said, okay, pray for the next generation. And that came out of my study in uh, judges, which maybe we'll unpack that a little bit at the end of the week. Friend, there's a lot, all right? We observed, we understood some meaning, and we've even applied a few things. I hope this time was helpful to you. We've set the stage for what happens tomorrow, and I'll look forward to seeing you then.